On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review... Wait. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Gladfelter here. I love Super 7's TMNT Ultimates line, and I've bought every single figure so far and reviewed them right here on this channel. So if you like this video and want me to do more like it, click that like button. And if you want to see when those episodes drop, click the subscribe button and that bell icon. We are a little over a year into TMNT Ultimates, and we now have wave three of the figures. This set including Michelangelo, Rocksteady, April, and Metalhead. Now the approach to this toy line is very similar to Motu Classics, where they're taking the classic action figures from the 80s and 90s and kind of bringing them into modern day with better articulation, better sculpting, and better paint applications. Unlike NECA's Turtle offerings, these are an online-only exclusive at Super 7 as well as other online retailers, and they come with a heftier price tag. These were still when they were $45 a figure, but now they're about $55 a figure. But so far, I have been so blown away by what they have given us that it has been well worth the price of admission. If you've purchased or seen any of the TMNT Ultimates or really any of Super 7's Ultimates toy lines, the packaging is more or less the same. You kind of have this trapezoidal box that are colored green if they are a good guy and purple if they are a bad guy. This is the second wave in a row. We only got one purple box, which I find interesting. There is an outer sleeve that you pull up to reveal a nice big window to show the figures and all the accessories inside. Personally, I find the Ultimates packaging a little boring at this point, and honestly, it takes up a lot of space. I wish Super 7 would give us a, do you just want this figure in a baggie to save maybe on shipping costs and maybe a little bit of the packaging costs and save the environment a little bit at the same time. The figures and accessories inside are two levels with some of the extra accessories and weapons tree in the back, and then the main figure and some of the main accessories in the front tray. I felt like this time taking the figures out was a little bit tougher. They seemed a little bit more snug inside the packaging. And that is where my Rocksteady's nose or front horn fell off immediately. So, you know, I don't think that was necessarily because of the tight packaging. I just think maybe the glue didn't adhere very well to that front horn. A super disappointing experience unboxing these figures. I mean, honestly, I've been so blown away by the quality, everything about them so far in the first two waves, and was really looking forward to Rocksteady just because he seems to be the big, hulking, highly detailed figure that the horsemen do so well. So the fact that his front horn fell off really detracted from my overall experience for not just this figure, but this entire wave. Luckily, it seems like it's probably a pretty easy fix. Just need to get some glue that I know won't ruin the plastic and kind of put the horn back on. I understand QC issues happen, and I hope this is more of just a one-off as opposed to a broader issue. Normally, I would start with my favorite to least favorite of the wave, but honestly, each figure had an issue that detracted from the overall experience with the figure for me. So I will just start in the order that I open them. First up is Michelangelo, our third of the core four turtles. And while they can get lost in the sea of amazing, big, beastly, monstrous figures that the four horsemen can do so well, I really think they knocked Raphael and Leonardo out of the park. But this Michelangelo falls a little bit short of his two brothers release so far. I think it's mainly because of the plastic used on this Michelangelo. He has a very unique kind of bright green color that is the same on his vintage counterpart. But in hand, in person, it just looks a lot more plasticky to me. It looks a lot more uh, toy-like as opposed to a premium action figure that the other two turtles had. The other two had a more matte appearance. This one is very shiny. So I don't necessarily think anything is wrong with the build. I, I think it's maybe more of just the type of plastic they use. It's a bit disappointing because it kind of doesn't look right with the other turtles and honestly we want to kind of match these four turtles all together probably sitting in the front of your display of tmnt ultimates and it's just it's a, a bit of a detractor to this michelangelo i also wasn't a huge fan of his alternate head sculpt really dug the Raphael and leonardo it looks okay i get that michelangelo is kind of the the, the party dude um but it just didn't quite capture that you know mikey-esque-ness that uh, we all know and love of the character his accessories are great though really love the nunchucks and uh, overall a solid figure but again that very shiny appearance uh really kind of detracts the overall feelings on this figure next up for me is rock steady probably would have been my 
easy win for fave of the wave. Again, I absolutely love Bebop, maybe my favorite figure out of every TMNT Ultimate release so far. So you'd have to think that his partner in crime, Rocksteady, would be ranked up there as well. But again, that QC issue with the horn was a detractor for me, as well as I think just his character design is a little bit more uh, subdued compared to Bebop. So there's just not as much for the horseman to work with here. But still, it's a fantastic, big, hulking figure with a lot of great detail and paint applications. Aside from the QC problem, I think it's a really great figure. The other little nitpicks more on the accessories accessory side. I know some of the accessories are a little bit smaller on the Bebop figure, but didn't really uh, make that much of a difference for me. But it really did here on the Rocksteady, his manhole cover shield looks tiny in his hands. I think it's scaled similar to the vintage figure, but the Rocksteady and Bebop are a lot bigger in scale than the vintage figures were. And in the hands of this Rocksteady, uh, the shield just looks really silly. So I'm just not going to use it. I'm going to use the knife and, and the gun when I display it. But I really uh, would have preferred to have a shield that maybe would have scaled a little bit better with this Rocksteady. Really dig the April figure that we get in this set. You know, you think I would probably like the alternate head sculpt here. It makes it, her look a little bit more like her cartoon appearance with the red hair. But I don't know why. I just really kind of dig the vintage head sculpt. And it may just be, again, because uh, that's the April figure that I had. And I just think it looks better with the uh, yellow jumpsuit that this April figure comes with. Maybe if this was maybe a later release, it had the orange pockets and stuff like that, I maybe would have preferred the uh, red hair. Uh, but for this version of the suit, I think the uh, shorter hair uh, with the brunette appearance, I think, uh, looks better overall. Tons of accessories that come with April. She also has another head with the uh, little uh, microphone, the, the uh, Britney Spears microphone. Uh, looks cool, but I prefer, you know, just the in-hand microphone. It, it kind of just uh, evokes more of the feel for April, which is interviewing somebody. And uh, I love that it still carries over uh, that gun hidden in the uh, camera <laughs> accessory that the original April figure had. I also love the little lanyard with the Channel 6 News. I think that's really cool. Definitely going to display uh, my April with that little lanyard. So overall, pretty solid. One nitpick here, though, is in the hips and the joints uh, of the hips. It's a little exposed. I think it just looks um, a little awkward when you have it standing there. Just a really nice looking sculpt that's kind of cut up in a weird way uh, where the legs join the hips. But overall, I really dig this April figure, and I think it's a really nice addition to the line. And last but not least is Metalhead. Again, this is one that they you could tell they were going all out for. A lot of detail here, a lot of neat little features, a lot of great paint applications, tons of accessories. And overall, I think it's another really, really great entry into the toy line. Uh, again, there's a little bit of a nitpick here though. I think it's a little top heavy, especially with the backpack. And because of that, and just the way they've designed these turtle figures, and it's similarly uh, designed with articulation stuff to the regular turtles, it has a hard time staying upright. The backpack is such a heavy accessory uh, that it keeps wanting to fall over, which is a bit of a bummer. Because again, I think all of the accessories, I love the extra hand with the little tentacle that comes out of it, uh, as well as the kind of movable sonar dish. I love that you have two versions of the nunchuck hand, one that can go into the backpack or one that could go into his wrist. They both spin, unlike the vintage one. Uh, you know, I wish we could have gotten Vac Metal here, but I know Vac Metal is, you know, uh, not as commonplace on action figures today. But man, if they could have done Vac Metal and figured out to how maybe how to make the backpack lighter, uh, this one would have been an absolute home run. So overall, I think it's a really solid wave. I'm glad I picked it up. There's some essential characters, April, Michelangelo, Rocksteady, and a, maybe Metalhead's not an essential character, but still one of those classic characters from the original toy line as well as the cartoon and overall i think it's still worth the pickup but for me personally the qc issues with rocksteady as well as the balance issues on metalhead and the very kind of plasticky appearance of michelangelo detract this way for me wave one wave two were home runs over the moon ecstatic for them these i'm just satisfied with i hope this is a one-off experience and not a sign of things to come I have a feeling this is more of the former than the latter because waves four, five, and six, which they have unveiled, look fantastic, great character selection, and I really do think there are a lot of great things to come for TMNT Ultimates.
I've got a full playlist of all my Super 7 TMNT Ultimates reviews. You can find that right here, as well as this video that YouTube wants you to check out. And until next time, hasta luego, and goodbye.